All right, so hey everyone, um, I'm gonna be talking about Helix and my journey um, as a NeoVim user switching over to Helix. I'm gonna give a quick introduction, talk about editor hopping, why I editor hopped from Vim to NeoVim and then NeoVim to Helix, um, and why maybe um, you should consider doing so yourself um, and give a small tutorial on Helix. It's not gonna be comprehensive at all, um, but it should give you a head start if you wanna try it out and then leave off with some concluding thoughts. Uh, so, as a um, full disclaimer, uh, the point of this talk is not at all to switch people to Helix. Um, I just want to encourage you to explore and learn new ideas, maybe challenge yourself to learn some new key bindings and muscle memory, and then bring those back over to NeoVim and, and improve your editing experience overall. Um, a bit about me, I love command line tools. Um, I build command line tools for work. Uh, I work at a company called Charm. Um, here's our GitHub. We do a lot of open source stuff. We Our most popular um, library is called Bubble Tea, and it helps you build TUIs using Go. Uh, we also built a bunch of other tools, um, two of which are GUM and VHS. And I think a lot of people might um, enjoy GUM if they do some any uh, command line bash scripting in general. So um, I have a quick demo of it. Um, uh, this, this script just uh, spins for a second while doing a command. Uh, ask me to pick a file, ask me to choose an editor, and then opens that f editor in that file. So it's loading. Ask me to pick a file. Let's let's say read me, and then ask me to pick a editor. Uh, let's say Helix, and it and it opens up. So you can like really easily write really nice batch scripts with with this tool. Another thing about me is that I really like to build CLIs for fun. Um, this presentation tool that I'm using, I built. Um, it's called Slides. Um, and it just lets me present in the terminal. And I also built another tool called Draw and another one called Gambit. And I have a quick demo. Um, draw just lets you uh, draw in your terminal. You can like draw boxes and, and do fun stuff. Uh, you can change the color. Uh, you can even type uh, whatever you want. So um, much lets you draw in your terminal. Um, and then Gambit lets you uh, press, uh, play chess in your uh, terminal. So you can uh, do all the cool chess things uh, like a real hacker. So yeah, those are that's a bit about me. Another thing about me is I use terminal-based text editors. Um, I've used other text editors in the past, but um, I'm currently using Helix, and I had used NeoVim for around two years before that. And this talk is going to be about uh, kind of using using Helix. So. I, I loved, I absolutely loved NeoVim, um, um, but this, this talk is about why I switched. Um, and, and really it's nothing about um, NeoVim being bad or anything like that. I actually really loved it and it's, it was my, my favorite editor for around a few, a few years. But I really switched because I wanted to learn new things. Uh, I wanted to learn new practices, uh, break some bad habits that I had with like kind of mashing the J key or H, uh, H or L. Uh, keys, and and really search for the best text editor for me. Um, there's obviously no objectively best text editor, but once you pass a th certain threshold of being good, um, some some people can have best text editors for them that just really work um, for them. Um, I also wanted to uh, challenge myself a bit. Um, I was kind of scared to learn Helix because I'm like, I've built all these muscle memories in Vim, and like, do I really want to learn a new text editor? It seems like it's going to be so much work. Um, but, but I really thought about like, if I hadn't switched to Vim, if I had the same thinking about, oh, I'm using VS Code right now, um, uh, do I really want to learn new v Vim key bindings? Like that seems like a lot of work. I wouldn't have found Vim or NeoVim, and that was a kind of a scary thought for me. So I, I kind of took that same thinking. I'm like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn these new key bindings. Um, and, and I found it super fun and enjoyable. So... Um, You've probably heard about Helix, but just to give like a full um, sort of introduction to it, um, it's a configurable terminal-based modal text editor. And, and I hope you picked up on the fact that that exact description could be used for uh, NeoVim as well. Um, and that's because Helix is super inspired by NeoVim and Cocoon. If you've used uh, NeoVim in the past, you'll really um, find yourself at home uh, in Helix. And it's also written in Rust. So, um, like I mentioned, it's super inspired by NeoVim, so that means they're quite similar in the sense that they're both terminal-based modal text editors. They both have Vim-style key bindings. They're both super configurable. 
Um, they have built-in LSP and built-in tree sitter integrations, and they have uh, macros built in as well. So why, why switch or why co even consider Helix? Well, there's a few differences that may or may not suit you. Um, well, first, there's no plugins and, and it is less extensible. Uh, it's a bit less mature. Um, it does have multiple cursors and selections. It's configured in Toml. And the most important one is uh, the way of editing is um, going from selection um, or to action, which um, I'll talk about a lot later or a bit later in the talk. So um, I said Helix has no plugins. Does that mean it's just like a bare bones editor that, that has no features? Uh, it's quite the opposite. It has a lot of built-in features. Anytime you've used like a Vim plugin, you're like, this should just be built in. Um, like any of the TPOP plugins like commentary or, or surround, um, those are just built in. Um, even Telescope, uh, Helix has its own version of Telescope built in as a fuzzy file finder. It has LSP set up um, completely out of the box, uh, has completion completely out of the box, diagnostics, multiple cursors, auto pairs, surround, uh, even witch key, uh, it's built in, has things like git gutter, indent guides, and all of these things are configurable. Um, and you can change the editor to your liking, but everything is built in. And so there's no plugins. It even has a ton of themes to choose from. So uh, let's let's get into a tutorial of Helix um, to see um, what what you might enjoy um, while using it. So first of all, this is my uh, configuration. Uh, you can see it's it's kind of crazy that um, my entire configuration fits on a single slide, um, and that just kind of speaks to how well set up uh, Helix is out of the box and. Um, when I used Helix for the first time, it felt like my configured NeoVim, um, my, my configured NeoVim that had like hundreds of lines of code and, and was tailored exactly to my liking. Um, so that might not work for you, um, and that's totally fine. I do suggest uh, switching to the base 16 transparent theme. Um, it's really nice. Okay, so um, these are also my key maps. Um, I've, I've just done a couple of key maps. These aren't really important, but... Uh, yeah, just to keep in mind. Okay, so here we go. Let's let's open up Helix and do a bit of a live demo. Um, Helix, uh, it kind of looks like this. Um, out of, not out of the box, but uh, this is just with my theme. Um, and you can uh, press space, and it opens a which key menu um, style it, style menu. And you can press F to to do fuzzy find, and it's kind of like telescope where you can preview the file, um, and it gives you like a fuzzy finder to to search stuff. So. Let's go to this this thing, and we can navigate with HJKL, um, just like NeoVim. And uh, you can press W uh, to go forward a word, B to go backward, E. Um, this should all be quite familiar to to all of you. So, and then you can press like F curly bracket to go to the curly bracket. Uh, you can press T curly bracket to go one character before it. Uh, Control U, D, F, and B all work the same in NeoVim. Um, GG goes to the first line. Um, G would go to the last line uh, if you remap it, but you can also press the built-in key binding, which is G and then E um, to go to the line and or to go to the last line. Um, something that I found pretty intuitive was instead of dollar sign to go to the last character, you press G L and you press uh, G H to go to the first character of the line. So that would be carrot. And another thing that I found quite intuitive is uh, if I delete this line, um, I'll show you how to do that later, but I can press U to undo and then shift U to redo. And I thought that was like quite intuitive um, out of the box. Um, so that's something where I was like, oh, I could bring this back to NeoVim and, and change my key bindings uh, to make them a little more intuitive. So again, space F to, to do the fuzzy file finder search. Um, if, it's, if it's wide enough, it'll show you a preview, which I really like. It's it's, my, it's basically my favorite NeoVim plugin, uh, Telescope built right in. Um, there's one thing that if you take away from this talk, it would, I would be very happy is um, to teach yourself uh, Helix. You could press space and then question mark. And this will open up a, a command line, uh, or sorry, uh, a fuzzy command search. So you, this is like every single action that you can do in Helix. And... Um, basically lets you search for anything. So if I want to go to line end, um, I could press that. It tells me the key binding to do, and it tells me uh, the command that it'll run. So you can use this as a, 
sort of a remap like guide. You can teach yourself Helix like, oh, I want to do this. And it'll tell you what to type and it'll tell you what to, uh, what to use as a command. If it doesn't have a key binding, you can map it in your config. Um, so yeah, that's navigation. You can get around, basically, if you know Vim key bindings, you can get around just fine. Um, the weird thing is that um, the entire uh, way of editing is sort of flipped. And you might see, um, you might ask, like, why, why did they deviate from Vim key bindings? Um, it, it just, it's really, um, it's really nice when you get into it. So uh, like I was kind of showing you when I press W, it has this weird like highlight whenever I move, um, move words. And it's actually selecting uh, the word for me. And then I can press any action. So I can do um, D to delete that word, or I can press C to delete that, or to delete and then enter insert mode, just like Vim. Uh, it's just flipped. So instead of DW to delete a word in Vim, you would press W, D to delete it in Helix. And, and again, why is that? Well, if you think about it, you can um, preview the change. So it's actually quite nice that I know exactly what I'm going to delete. Um, I don't have to do any guesswork. If I press Shift W, I know that this is exactly what I'm going to delete. And you have like a fraction of a second extra to think about, oh, actually, I want to go into insert mode. So I'll press C instead of D. Um, so and if you misselect um, a character, you can just like add it to the selection and then press, press things. So it's just flipped. Um, and it's really cool that it gives you like a preview. And the other thing is it's really intuitive um, with the single character key bindings. So as you can imagine, in Vim, you press X to delete a character. But in Helix, um, you can just think of the cursor as a single selection and then press D to delete it. Um, so instead of WD, you just press D to delete any character that your cursor is currently on. Um, and that's, I found a little more intuitive than pressing X because D is also already the delete um, symbol. So, um, and now because you don't need X um, bound to, to Vim anymore, X is the way to select a line. So I can press X to select the line and then D to delete it or C to delete it and enter insert mode or X and then Y to, to yank it. Um, so I hope that kind of makes sense in terms of like why selection is is or is is nice to have before because I know exactly what I'm going to select and then press the um, press the correct key binding and X just if you keep pressing it just keep selecting lines and I've mapped um, Shift X to select above um, which I I think is quite intuitive. Okay, so like I mentioned, cursor is a single selection, so um, you don't need S anymore because C does the same thing as S in Vim. Um, because, the, again, the cur cursor is a single selection. So S is actually for filtering selections. Um, so I can press percent sign, which selects the entire file. And then I can, I can do S to filter the selection and then type log. So now my, um, my entire, uh, I have like multiple selections um, on the log. And then I can press C and then um, type FMT. And it will um, change all of those. And I can do the same thing with something like uh, NeoVimConf, and then I can type whatever I want. Um, and then I had just have multiple cursors going, so um, it's pretty nice. And then, yep, um, Q would be to record a macro, so I can press Shift Q. Uh, and then it's recording to the at, regis at register. You notice uh, it's like one less keystroke than Vim. Um, and then I can go to the beginning of the line, delete this, uh, type log, and then press Shift Q again to stop recording, and then press um, lowercase q to perform the macro. Um, so it's, it's a couple keystrokes less, nothing crazy. Um, you can also press quote to peek at your registers. Um, and then you can select a register. So if I type A um, and then I hit Q, it's actually, um, sorry, if I press that and then I press sh uh, quote A and then I type Q, um, it's rec it will record to the a register, there we go. Um, and then you can look at your register um, here. And then last but not least, I really enjoy this um, sort of Unix philosophy type of um, editing where I can do something like select the whole file um, and then pipe it to something. So if I hit the pipe key, uh, you can write sort and it'll pipe that selection to the sort utility in in Unix, and which is really cool. And then you can do something like pipe it to unique and then get a unique, um, unique sort of uh, 
lines of code. So I found that really intuitive and, and there's a lot more that um, you can do with Helix. Uh, this is just sort of like a tiny tutorial to get you used to like selection and um, and editing. So I hope that was pretty pretty fun to to see all that stuff. Um, and yeah, there's a ton more, and I really recommend something like Helix Tutor um, to go through on your own and and look at it uh, because it's it's quite interesting. And and again, um, I stated this in the beginning, but you don't have to switch to Helix. I just want to encourage you to explore and learn new ideas. Hopefully you'll see the intuitiveness of some of the key bindings that, that Helix authors thought of because they didn't have to, uh, didn't have to like maintain backwards compatibility or they could um, completely shift stuff. Just like NeoVim kind of remapped by default the shift Y stuff, uh, they don't have to have entire mountains of legacy um, to worry about. Helix could could think of things from first principles and and do stuff like that. And you can bring these concepts back to NeoVim, just like some of the key bindings uh, once you learn them. So I just want to end off with with a conclusion. So just imagine if you never tried NeoVim or Vim, how would you know it wasn't it wasn't the best editor for you? Um, you wouldn't because you would um, continue using the editor that you were comfortable with, and you wouldn't have um, switched and learned these new things. Even if you went back to something like Atom or VS Code, you might have started using Vim key bindings and, and been a lot faster um, editing. So um, it, it's, it's quite understandable to just learn it. Um, and then you don't need to switch permanently to Helix. You can always go back, bring the concepts that you learn. It'll be a fun uh, sort of journey for you to learn um, everything. So yeah, just to end off, I, I don't want to force you to switch to Helix. I just want to encourage you to, to explore and, and learn new ideas. So yeah, that's that's my talk. Uh, hopefully, people learn uh, Helix and then bring those concepts back to NeoVim and and make NeoVim better. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening to my talk. Uh, this is Confetti. Uh, I, I built this tool as well. Um, and if you ever want to reach out, talk about Helix or or anything, um, you can reach out to me on Twitter, and and I will gladly talk to you about nerdy uh, command line stuff.